Let's see. Hey everyone, welcome to Cat's Creations live on Sunday night. This is Sunday, November the 28th of the year 2021. And today we are doing a gingerbread inspired uh, wreath. We're going to be using a 24 inch white evergreen, or not evergreen, white pine uh, work frame. It's kind of not really a work frame. It's just a white pine wreath. So this is a 24 inch from Joann's and I'm going to go ahead and start fluffing while you guys are joining. Um, and sometimes you can get these at a really good price so that if you can't find a work frame like me today, I wanted a work frame, um, but Hobby Lobby's closed on Sunday and um, I thought I actually had some left, but I don't. Should be doing top and bottom at the same time. Michelle said, yay, the white evergreen. The white, yeah, the it's called a white pine. That's what someone told me. It's called white pine, cat. It's not an evergreen. Evergreen is green. So we're using this white pine. Huh? The other white pine, right? Because there's a white pine that is actually green. So go figure there. So the first thing you want to do is fluff everything out especially if you're going to use it in any fashion, because this is the way you will pick them up or purchase them from your local craft place. So physically touch all of your branches, make sure they're all in the places where they're supposed to be. And as you can see, there's quite a big gap between the bottom frame and the top frame. And so is that from Joann's? Yes, yeah. this is from Joann's. So this is similar to the one that I used, was it last week? Sometime last week, either on a Friday or Sunday live. I think we did one with the, the white pine. So happy okay. end of the weekend. Our holiday weekend has officially come to a close as we anxiously wait for Christmas and New Year's as I'm sure all of you are. I hope you all had a great Thanksgiving. Welcome back. Feel free to like and share. We appreciate it. <sighs> yeah, so if you want to get notified when I am live and you happen to be on Facebook like I am when I'm not doing anything, <clears throat> um, the like and follow button at the bottom will notify you when we go live. So we're almost done. So... Um, a lot of the craft places like uh, Michael's and Joann's had some really good sales. So if you can catch these on sale, these are a really good price. I think sometimes they're doing, you know, it depends on if it's a door buster, but they're at least half off, which is a really good price. And runs about the same as it would if you were doing a work frame. Plus, you get so many more tinsel ties to use. You're not just stuck with, I think it's 17 that most of them come standard with, which is so nice. Hi, gal. Thank you, Rosario. She shared and blessed our page. Thank you so much. Michelle said, I love using those types of bases, even the green. Yes. So we did that for um, my private group. We did one for, what did we make? Oh, we did a winter barn and we used just the regular evergreen. Um, for a farmhouse, but look at how gorgeous that looks. So we are going to use the, 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 the 21 inch mesh and we're gonna poof the whole thing. This was from Joann's last year. So at the end of the year, this became like my favorite gingerbread mesh to use. Um, so then I went back and um, tried to find any more of it that was in my local store. And I think I, might have gotten, I think, three or four rolls. So the first thing I wanted to do is. So I did a show last weekend and yesterday. They did amazing. Awesome. Good job. Thank you, Rebecca. She sent 500 stars. Thank awesome. you, Rebecca. I appreciate that. Hi, Gail's joining. Hi, John. So I'm going to gather all of this raw edge because this is how it frays, is wherever it's cut. So we're gonna contain all of this and I'm gonna zip tie it because sometimes 
the tinsel ties have a tendency of coming loose. So we're just going to extra, extra reinforce it. So zip tie that mess and then we're going to trim it up because that does not look very, I don't even know what you would call that. I don't like it. This is just all over the place and I have it so thick. I'm trying to get my scissors to go through. Yeah, I'm doing, I like just doubling the whole thing over on the band and then just the whole thing. Oh, nah, I like the little fuzzy end. <laughs> this is just a thing for me. So in order to keep this from getting all tangled, I'm gonna take the whole roll and drop it below and I'm gonna start on the inside, so in here. So I am just going to take this, flip it over, and I'm going to zip tie. Actually, I'll start right here on my cross. As you can see, there's like little cross beams. So let's take this one and move it down. And we'll start this on a cross member because it gives it some extra strength. Well, Shosa, that was my favorite mesh. I'm excited they won't, didn't bring it back. I know. Parents said, love, love, love that mesh. I'm trying to get it to go under. It's just, with zip ties being what zip ties are, that they're straight. Let's pull that through. Okay, now we'll contain the whole mess again. There we go. Nice and snug. There we go. Okay. Flipping it back over, we're going to start poofing, and I like to use 10 inch poofs. So I've actually measured my arm so I don't have to keep figuring out where 10 inches is. So it's just shy of my elbow right about here. Da, 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 da. See, if I go from my wrist uh, almost to my elbow, 10 inches. Here we go. We forget to turn her off. And then she goes crazy trying to be helpful with all the great deals right now. I know. Hello. Anything close. So, 10 inch poofs. So, I'm keeping this roughly under the same premise if we were doing this with a regular. Um, which I call it tinsel tie. So I always like to fluff as I go, which means just put your hands in, kind of push stuff around, and then we're going to situate it right inside. So on a normal one, I believe there's about, hmm, I'm guessing, seven, seven on the inside. Is it, is it seven? No, I think it's eight. I think it's eight. Let me find one that's open. We have an availability right there. So we'll just make sure. And I always hate to see the finished ends. So I like to tuck those ones down in the middle. Pull another 10. Fluff. Find a vacancy. And we're going to fill it. So really all you're going to see is just a handful of the tinsel ties in between the mesh. Pull this up so I can tuck my finished edge on the inside. Another 10, open. There we go, better poof. The other one looks kind of questionable. There we go. Right inside. Oop. Take. Now, if you struggle with poofs, tips, make sure your poofs are consistent. 
make sure they're all the same size. You don't want to have some like super big and some that are super small. So just be consistent. Well, see, I'm just staying consistent. So on here, I'm just like looking for the next opening. And if you look at the height of my poofs, and I'm kind of poofing as I go, they're all the same height. So right to my elbow, take it. Make sure everything is all open. See how it folded right there? I see it says cold and snowing in in Ohio. Oh. Or the top where we is at too. Really? Yeah. Gotta love that wintry weather. Okay, another poof. Open this up. And then another 10 inches. Make sure everything is nice. See, I'm like, this almost looks like funnel cake or bunt cake by the time I finish. Let's see. I'm going to do this and probably put a short little one right in here just to get me from here to the next spot. Barbara's at 31 degrees and snowing in upstate New York. Ooh. But see, that makes it feel like it winter. Yeah, winter. Ours is 75, and it's not supposed to be like this. I'm sure they would trade that all over <laughs> I'm sure they would, too. So I'm going to go right to where I started, and there I want my twist. But the great thing is there's so many more available. You just take that one, carry on, soldier on. Okay. So there's that. Now I am going to go from here to the bottom. Barbara said I'll take 75. You'll take 75? I'll send you 75. Sounds like an auction. I'll take 75. You I'll send, trade you. You send us 31. You send us 31. I'll send you 75. All right. So I'm going right down to the bottom. So I'm just making that transition from the top to the bottom. And we're going to push. Again, always fluffy, fluffy, fluffy. And then we're going to start poofing to the outside. Same thing, 10 inches. We're just going to be consistent all the Where's way around. The deal? I'm packing. All right. We could do a house swap on here, man. Right? Wouldn't Same that be thing. good? Like a home exchange? Like you guys come to California where I hate the weather. Just pay for the airfare, leave the cars. And... Yeah. This house is all decorated. It's all ready for the holidays, so you're good to go. Great. Well, it's not quite finished. We have a couple things that we're working on. I'm too picky. Although this year I did let my tree be dominated by my oldest and her husband because it's his first time in America. And they're not going to decorate a tree because they said they're coming here. So why decorate a tree at their house? It's because it's Christmas, that's why. Mm -hmm. um, but they said, can we just decorate your tree? So the OCD side of me is like, no. Do I let them decorate it? And then when they leave, I just redecorate it. Um, so I, I actually... I come to Boston. And then Barbara said, I've totally decorated it. I'll leave food. <laughs> we'll leave food too. Man, what a deal, right? Crafting home exchange. There you go. Start a whole new business for people who want to come to places. Just have to make sure you're not allergic to cats. That's true. Because we can't take our pets with us. So you'd have to be a pet sitter for four cats, Barbara. And they're all inside cats. So we're fluffing. And I just find the next available. I'm going to kind of go a little bit further here because I want it in between. And I want a top and a bottom for this one. 
So I'm just finding one that goes on the top, one that goes on the bottom. No, no Snoopy. No dogs. No dogs. We're just, we're dog people too. We just don't have any dogs. Okay. I'm going to pick this one up so I can poof the lower end of this. There's the top. Let me find it. There's the top. There's the bottom. I think I want to go a little bit further though. Hang tight. There we go. Oh, but it's creating such a great base. I know, yeah, pieces stick out there. Oh, yeah. They'll still be like the white because it's all still part of the, the design. It's all still part of the color palette. How much are those at Joanne's? Um, well, it depends on what Joanne's sell you hit. If it's the 75% off doorbusters, it's probably uh, like. Those wreaths are part of the doorbusters? Some of them are. Yeah, it just depends on if you hit the doorbuster sale for Black Friday or something. Um, I think it was like six bucks. Which is, it falls right in line with a work frame mm -hmm. price. See, I'm just taking these and fluffing my, my poofs. Got to get rid of the edge, though. Don't want to see the edge. But I need to see my poof. So it's going to be super fluffy though. That's for sure. Right here, right in the middle is where we're going to end our poof. Not end it, but this one. I think I want this one a little bit further. Okay. We're going to go just a little bit further. Right in here. Trying to get these ones to go in between the others. Hi Anna, thanks. You said the hundred stars as well. Thank you, Anna. I appreciate that. So stars for those of you that are watching, it's only for Facebook subscribers. Um, you can do it either during the live or after the live. We are supporting a family in need for Christmas, so that's where all your stars money is going. And each star is the equivalent of one cent. So if you sent a hundred stars, you're sending a dollar. So that's, if you guys hear about it or see it, that's exactly what they are. People have the option to use them for whatever they'd like. And we're just giving back because it's just a new Facebook thing. Super fun. Okay, there's that. Oops. Trying to find the underside because my poof is folded right there. Sharon says we had a light snow this morning here in New Jersey. Wow. So right now the temperature is 36. Can't tell what our temperature is here. Steve is just outside before our live because it's so hot outside. And I was looking at our neighbors. They just put their Christmas lights up. They decided to do Grinch. So the guy only did like the very front, halfway part of his house. And then um, he's got one of the giant wooden Grinches. So he just kind of balls up the rest of the lights like the Grinch pulled them down. So that's a super easy way to get out of decorating for the holidays. Looks cute. Let's see. Let's go right in the middle of... It's 55. It's 55? See, it's 55. Some of you guys are like, that was our daytime high for today. Okay, I mean, so most of your poofs are perfectly uniform. It's the, been a while since I've used that method. Yeah, I haven't haven't done it. So here we're gonna we're gonna end it. This is our jump down point. So I'm actually gonna go right in here. Let's just make sure this is all left back out. Sometimes you just have to take it get it all reorganized make sure it's not all folded 
And we're gonna go right in here. Right there. And there we go. So these are going under my little poof. So I have like little sporadic places here and there. I think it's quite full. I don't really feel like I need to go back in and add any more decamash. So that being said, I'm going to go ahead and trim this right here because I don't have enough to use it on another wreath, but I need to get rid of what I have in my hand. So we're going to take that. We're going to flip it. Look, you there, that's where we started. We're going to bring this on the inside and do the exact same thing. We are going to go back under our cross beam, go back under this one so it won't slide around. We're going to join the two together in wetted crafting bliss. And cinch this one up just like that. So that is what the bottom looks like, which is so nice. There we go. Okay, flip it back over. There is our happy poos. Super full. Super big. Happy um, love. Hmm? Right? Happy poos. Happy poos. So this is, let's see, if we're measuring it from end of deco mesh to end of deco mesh, it is 24 inches. Um, before we do anything else, we're gonna go ahead and take care of the outside ones that I was able to hit. Don't need that tinsel tie. We are using a wide variety of combination of ribbon. So I'm going to do these much like I did with my private group earlier. This is our combo of two and a half inch mesh or two and a half inch ribbon cut to 14 inch pieces. And then we're going to do the fur edged, same red, white, and beige with the furry edge. These are eight, inch and a half cut to 18 pieces. That's that set. And then we're coming in because our sign is green. We need to pop that green into our wreath. 14 inch pieces here, and then the inch and a half, we're gonna do the Swiss dot to match her dress. So those are the ribbon combinations. Inch and a half cut to 18 inch pieces. Uh, two and a half inch pieces are cut to, what did I just say? <laughs> two and a half are cut to 14 inches. 14 inches yeah. Inch and a half is cut 18. to 18 inches. So um, the ribbon, where did it all come so from? Full. So, thank you, Jenny. She's on three hundred stars, and Chris on fifty stars. Thank you, both Jenny and Chris. So, this ribbon from Craft Outlet, the gingerbread is from Craft Outlet. The Swiss dot is from Craft Outlet, and the uh, what do we do? Um, the furry edge one. Uh, that is from Craft Outlet as well. So, winner, winner. To craft outlet dinner. Barbara, yeah, we don't do as much as we used to. She said, I'll bet you already do this, but I just ordered umbrella bags to put the deco mesh rolls in. We just uh, reuse the rolls that they come in. The yeah. Rolls. So, like when you open your deco mesh, my whole goal is not to have leftovers. So, I try to find um, techniques or methods that allow you to use up that whole roll of mesh. Um, here, I won't even reuse the 21 inch, it'll just go into the trash because it's just not enough to go anywhere. Um, but on the 10 inch rolls, um, if I don't, like let's say for example, I do a half and half and I'm gonna save that, whatever roll it came in, I use the cellophane and the label, that way I know where I ordered it from and um, I don't need to order the umbrella yeah, so bags, yeah. right? So we're gonna do half bows while we're doing this as well. So I've just, added my tails here. We're going to come in with a fur edge. We're going to bring our dovetailed edges together at about two inches from the top, meaning we're pinching it in here. We're going to go ahead and add those 
right in to our tie. We'll open that up and you always have to right side one of your tails. Merry Christmas, Chris. She sent 400 stars. Thank you, Chris. And then she sent another 380 stars. Thank you, Chris. Thank you so much. Okay, so here's our next one. We're going to do the green gingerbread. So I always fold them in half just so that I know where center is. Kind of gather that up. We're going to add this in. This month we're going to the Victor's Island Mission. Uh, this month we're sponsoring a family for Christmas, so it's going through Cavalry Chapel, Chino Hills. Hills. Yeah, they just basically buy gift cards and then give them to the families they vetted so that the families can still go shopping for their kids and provide the holiday meal. Basically make the parents feel good because I'm sure it's, it's hard enough to ask. So that's where it's going. So here we go with the red Swiss dot. I love Swiss dot. It's my backup if I can't get uh, solid ribbon, I'll go with a Swiss dot on top of that. So we're just making these little poof bundles right underneath. And these are going around the outside. I love the green ribbon with the gingerbread. Yeah, isn't that pretty? They make so many different kinds. They have it on natural. They have it on white. They have it on red. Um, I like the green because it actually played to our sign today. You always just got to make sure you give your tinsel ties enough of a twist. I'll try to get through this pretty quick. How many of you are asking for wreath making supplies or wreath making tools for Christmas this year? I'm trying to think if I added any. I don't think so. So there's those. Keep on going around. We may, depends on how the overall design turns out, we'll figure it out. Um, we might have to come back up on the top and add them on the top as well. How many people have to be brave going out and shopping? Not me. Okay, grocery shopping doesn't really count at Target, right? No, you still buy, you still did buy. We got stocking, stocking stuffers for all of our kids, our kids being like well over their 20s. When does that ever stop becoming a thing? I was just thinking that. I can say next year. You can say next year. Our kids will be like, well, we'll find some other place to go. And then off they go. I mean, I still do it for my brother who's 55. I still make sure he has a stocking. I do it for my dad. Just because I think it's nice. It was like, go back to the vintage days. Lenore said she did. She braved the wilds. You brave the wilds of the holiday weekend. Black Friday. Black Friday is. I want to call Saturday. A small business Saturday. Small business Saturday. Yeah. Why, when did that ever become a thing? What is Sunday? A day of rest. Don't go out. Sanity check. Hi Charlotte, she says that's so sweet. One, two. You always want to make sure you give your tinsel ties plenty of twists because you don't want to just give it just the bare minimum and then find out. See, here's that edge. I'm going to take the edge, bring the edge in, pull my poof up. There we go. Let's pull those up. So they're out of the archive. And we're going right in here, wherever we have a little indent. So if you guys like this design, 
and want to use it, this is a great use. Sometimes at the end of the season, they'll put all their, um, you know, 18 inch or 24 inch uh, evergreen or pine uh, frames on sale. I mean, you might pick these up for 80% off, 75% off. These are great to hang on to for next year because we never know if we're going to have a supply issue or what, but this is a great backup for um, a work frame. Because as you can see, you just kind of keep on going. So just clicking that share button will share this video to your page where it is so much easier to find than trying to dig it, you know, dig for it on my page or remember was that that Friday or what Friday was she on that I needed to capture that video from. There's that. I want to make sure that this one and let me just tell you there's only today and tomorrow left on my website and my Etsy shop for you to get 20% off of everything in my shop. On my Etsy shop, you can actually get your year membership in the private group for 20% off and get a really good deal there. This wreath is already listed. All you see is the Christmas calories don't count. Trust me, it's going to be an amazing price. Um, pretty much almost pays for the entire shipping cost to ship it. We're almost nearing the end. So if you go over to catscreationsandmore.com, you can shop the 20% off sale, or you can go to my Etsy shop, which is Cats Creations Reese, and um, pick up anything. There we go. Brown. Sometimes the head just does not function properly with the brain. I love this ribbon. It is so incredibly thick. You could actually only cut, like when you're doing your dovetail cut, you can't even cut two pieces together. It has to be single. That's how thick it is. Isn't he cute? We have one in our house too. I love it. It just makes your home feel special for the holidays. That was a Dollar Tree thing? Mm-hmm. So light, too. Yes, it is. Up. So this is thinking one. Yeah. So this one, because we did odd number for some reason. It just turned out an odd number of poos. Um, if you notice, we're like, we need one in here, but I've already done green and I've done brown. So I'm going to show you a trick that you can use. Let me make sure this is on there doubly good. We're going to actually use both. So we're going to use the green. No, we'll put green on bottom. So we're going to do these both at the same time, right in here. Trying to get it up under. We're going to open these up and spread them out. There we go. So that says it matches her curtains, her shower curtains. This? No, her snowman. <laughs> oh, her snowman. Okay. 
And then we're going to do the same thing with this, but we're going to do the double bow here. So we're going to do half bow and a half bow. Pinch them together. And I need this up and down. We're going to fit them both in. Good twist. Open the loop. Right side our loop. Do the same here. Open our loop. And we're going to flip that around. And that's how you solve the dilemma of what do you do when you have an uneven number. Unless you do three different ribbon combinations and then the, the math works out perfectly. But that's how we use all the ribbon all the way around. Um, we are going to create a bow. Let's see. If we added our sign, look at how nice and fluffy that is. It's like mm -hmm. super fluffy. Um, let's see what the bow is going to do. And then we'll go from there. So I'm going to set this off to the side. I'm going to grab my bow dabra. Grab all my ribbon. We're probably going to put the green on the bottom since it's sitting on that um, red, white, and beige already. So we have this. We're also going to add in a green um, with snowflakes. And then, of course, we have velvet gingerbread men. So I know these guys are going to go on the outside edge, I think. Let me see. How do I want to break this up? Do I want to go like that? I think I do. I like the way the color combinations are playing. Like you have the dots going with the dots and then we're back to the gingerbread men on the outside. So with that being our order, we are going to start with dovetailing our ends, which is just bringing your wired edges together. You're going to take your scissors and always cut from the folded side to the end of your wired point. You can go the opposite direction, but make sure that you're not going from the wired edge down to the folded point. If you do that, you wind up with an arrow instead of a perfect V in your ribbon. And this one we're doing 10 inches in. And then we're going to twist. Where we twist it is where it's going in our bodabra. And we want five and a half inch loops. So let's make sure. By measuring, I always bring my bow dabber back to the 10. We're going to bring this in just a little bit. And there's our five and a half inches. I turn my bow dabber. I don't know why I started doing that, but I always build from the left. And I'm not left-handed. I just do. <coughs> back here. Double check the length. Because I find if your ribbon loops and tail lengths are the same. It makes for fluffing your bow much easier. So here's 10 inches. We will dovetail again. Ooh, look, right there's a nasty splice. How is that a good splice? That's a nasty splice. I saw it. So just so I don't forget that it's there and start pulling that out. I really wish ribbon companies would stop doing that. Yeah, that was a good waste of... And I cut it right where it was spliced. Six and a half, almost seven inches because it was such a bad splice. Okay, here we go again. Dovetail cut. This one's going to be nine and a half inches right in here. We're going to spin this. So nice too because the candy that they used on here, like the little um, peppermint round 
swirls is the exact same peppermint that's on the sign. We're going to do five inches here for our loop. So we'll bring it back way too big. There we go. Flip this around, measure out another five inches. Double check your measurements. I don't want to pull my Bodabra. I just want to pull the ribbon. And then back out nine and a half inches. Dovetail. Now we do our fur edge. This one will be fun to stuff in the bow dabber since it's so thick. First, we have to put a dovetail end on that. This one is going to be nine inches in. Twist. Go ahead and feed that in. Bring it up and over. And we want four and a half inches on our loop size. There's four and a half. That's not nice when you get wire stuck in your hand. No, That's on the inside when I want to put my hand on the inside. Four and a half. And then back out to nine. Gotta love the wires. Because you can see it. Let's make sure we get a better cut. You can see the wire on the underside here. Okay. Now we're gonna do our snowflake. This ribbon is from Kringle Designs. They have their own website. So it's K with K R I N G Kringle Designs.us. This one's going to be at eight and a half inches. So it's going to be starting to pull our green into our design. And this is also going to be four and a half inches because we've already measured the bottom. If you put your fingers in, you can give it a pull. That way you don't have to line it up to measure. Same thing on this side. Pull, but we will have to measure our tail length, which is, there we go, eight and a half. Isn't that pretty? Matter of fact, if you go to kringledesigns.us, if you use the code 5050, the numbers 5050, um, all their supplies are 50% off, which really excites you when you're there. I always forget because I start throwing things in my cart. I'm like, wow, that's a really high price. And then I'm like, oh, that's right, 5050, it's half. Keep shopping. This one is eight inches. Spin this around. This is gonna be a four and a half inch loop. This is just my bow recipe for the type of bow I like. Since I know about how big it'll be and how full it is and roughly what it'll look like. Um, it's kind of like a recipe. I just kind of say, okay, that's the bow I want. Unlike the bow we did Friday, the funky bow. That was whatever you like. This last one is the velvet gingerbread guys. Kind of matches the other one, but this one's on creamy velvet. 
and this will be seven and a half inches. And this is also from Craft Outlet as well. So if you come across this, it's a super soft velvety ribbon. And we're gonna go three and a half inches for our ribbon length. Need to check it, flip it around, it's getting awful thick in there. Make sure three and a half and out to seven and a half and our bow is done. Dovetail this last piece, grab a pipe cleaner because we're gonna try and aim for the top um, frame. So we'll see. Right here, we're gonna pick the whole thing up. Make sure you got all the pieces. As you're picking it up, you're pushing down at the same time to compress all those layers of ribbon. And then you're just going to hold your pipe cleaner and twist the stack. And then you're going to grab your fluff board, cutting board, or whatever you have handy for fluffing. This works really well, especially if you're doing a poof wreath, because you're, you don't really have any substance on the top to push back against you for fluffing, just because it's the deco mesh poofs. So I'm going to feed this onto my C hook, just like that. It just keeps me from having this move completely off the board. Mine is an 18 by 24 inch by three quarter inch cutting board, but you can go to like your home improvement stores. If you don't have anyone who could cut it and you don't want to spend the money on the cutting board, go get a 24 by 24 by one inch pre-cut piece of wood, and then just add an inch and a half to a two inch C hook, screw it in and you're good. Make sure you sand the sides down. Yeah. There's so many things you could custom, you know, you could put your name, your business name on there. So we're going to separate loops from tails. We start at the top. You can pick whichever way you want to go. If you want loops on the left, tails on the right, or vice versa, it's up to you. Just go opposite. Then you're going to go to the other side. We have a loop here on the left. So we need to move the loop, the same one, to the right. And we need to pull the tail out to the left. Looking down, I know it looks funny right here, but your tails and your loops are directly across from each other. And so all we're doing right now is separating the stack. So we're gonna separate these ones. Okay, we're gonna pull this one out. We're still the same. Now we're alternating the colors as we go down. We're gonna kind of follow this around to the green. So we're gonna follow the same pattern. And do it down here and out here. Then we're going to take our green, doing it there. Whatever you do to the top, do the opposite to the bottom. If you forget what you're done, just look at the top and then just match the opposites on the bottom. So here we're going back here, back here. And then our gingerbread on top is going here and here, okay? If you look at it, my tails are all to the middle. My loops are all north and south or top to bottom. And now I'm gonna start fluffing. So I'm gonna pull from the top, okay? You're gonna grab your next one down, put your fingers in the loop. Since that's why we invest in a wired ribbon, it holds its shape. You're pulling up and out, and then you're just kind of picking what color do you want to be where. So I like that next to my red. So I'm gonna pull that here and I want my green in between these two, I think, just like this. Okay. 
And then don't forget your ones on the bottom. The green's going between those two. And the tan will go between these ones. Do the same on the opposite. Just moving my tails around. And then to put your arcs back in your tail, just use your fingers like little scissors. And then you can put your curl back in. So that's going to follow our deco mesh all the way down. And you can design it any way you want. If you want, you know, your ribbons to be intermixed with your tails or your loops, then the choice is up to you. You decide. Okay. And there we go. There is our bow. So our bow is all set. We're ready to pop it off the same way, well, the opposite way we put it on. It's pretty thick. We're done with that. Now we are going to find it at home on our overly full cake. So I'm just going to kind of set this here like that. Let's see how we can put our sign right there. That would make super cute. Look at how cute that is. We just bring that down. A lot of the tails kind of cascade over just a touch. Kind of liking that. And then we'll add some more ribbon to the outside. Okay, so we know that's going to go there. I'm going to go ahead and add that right here. So I'm going to take my pipe cleaner. I'm going to go right down to the frame. Because you can grab hold of the top frame. I'm just trying to work my pipe cleaner down through fabric mesh. Chance that she likes the cream bow with the ginger ribbon on it. Yeah, it's it's my, one of my favorites. Okay, I don't want to pull too tight, but I just need to get it right where I want it to go. Now we can come back and refluff. Out, out, out. Let us refluff, refluff. Yeah, but I think I have just barely enough mm -hmm. and I'm not liking how pulled down my um, ribbon is. So I'm going to give it some extension so I don't have to pull it so tight, which simply means I'm going to take these and twist them together to give me just a little bit more of a pipe cleaner to work with. That way I know I have more than enough pipe cleaner on there. Same thing here. And now when I go to pull it down, I know I have way more than enough. I'm just trying to get the, let's see, we wanted loops. Okay. This is the nice thing about using the evergreen is you can just reach right under the entire wreath. And now I don't have to collapse my bow just to make the ends meet. Now it stays nice and puffy. Just like so. And we'll let this cascade off the back because that looks so pretty. Okay, 
we need to add pipe cleaners to the back of our sign. So because this sign is at least a quarter inch thick, we are just going to staple that to the back, but I'm gonna do the same thing so I have more than enough to reach the back of my, or the underside of my wreath. If I needed it for my bow, I'm gonna definitely need it for my sign. So this is how you create extensions for your pipe cleaner. We're gonna take them, fold them, and we're going to flip that one more time. Staple these right onto the board, right here, right here. I know, very left. We're gonna twist those together. And the exact same thing on the other side. Make sure that end goes all the way around. Loop. Twist. Okay, now we can add our sign to our wreath. So we want the tails to cascade just over the top. So I'm gonna place it pretty much right there, which is nice because it's right in between, right here, in between my mesh, which means I know right where the frame is. We don't wanna pull too tight but just a little bit. So I'm kind of giving it some weight to the top so I know where, where I wanna have my sign mounted. And then I'm gonna go ahead and twist that on. Go over to the other side, do the exact same thing again, right between. This one's actually going right to a cross beam, which is wonderful. Do the same thing, push it down as far as you want it to go so you know exactly how tight to pull. Try to push a little bit of that poof underneath so our bow doesn't look like it's higher than our sign. We're gonna move this out to the side so we can still see our Christmas. which is Christmas calories don't count. There we go. Okay, there's that. Now let's fix these couple spaces. Let us. No problem, Claire, every night. Was one thing I didn't bother to do. Let's pull up my things. Charlotte, she used to do a lot of craft shows, but she hasn't really last. Our local market here yeah. does not generate the time that it would take for me to do it. Like the people that live in the same city as me would not want to pay anything more than like Walmart a Costco prices. price. Well, Costco would be like the most. Uh, yeah. So like $50. Um, if I wanted to go and make those, then yeah, I could. But um, I'm choosing to just do it here. I gotta go find my tie. Teach and sell the internet. Hmm? Teach and sell the internet. Yep. I'm trying to find my other twist tie. It's under. That's under. There we go. One above, one below. So I'm going to kind of do these a little bit 
around the outside because I think it, it definitely needs a little bit more. Here's our edge. Remember, I don't want to deal with the edge. So I'm making interior bows and exterior bows. So we've got one here and then I'm trying to pick the pattern that goes completely opposite um, with that, which is, I was trying to think what went with the gingerbread. It was the, the colored pieces. So I'm just back filling those because it looks, I don't like this look. I feel like it needs something. So this is that one I told you, you can't really double up and cut. It has to be single cut. Do the same thing. Let's see. I may or may not like this. So no. we will see. It might look like it's just completely, and I don't like it. Okay, so this one is completely squishing the other side. So let's do this. Let's cut this down to this just a little bit. I was gonna say it right at 14 and we can just do a double tail, but let's do a little bit longer. I'm gonna put this right in here. So I'm gonna get this one out of the way. And go one high. We can go one low here. Okay. And we can still see the one right below. Just like that. Takes care of that problem. So here we have the exact same. So let's try the same. 14. I did a 14 on the two and a half, and I did a 15 on the inch and a half. Because otherwise, they impede the one below. I just don't want that to do. Let's do double cut, shortcut. When you're just cutting one, you can just match the top to the bottom. And go right in here. Thing. And we'll add this to the top. Seems like it's a triple layer cake. Same thing. One above, one below. Okay. We'll do one here on the end. And since I'm going to be consistent, let's just on the top stay consistent. So let me cut a couple of these. Because we have one here and one there. And I think we have a couple on the other side. So we're just going to dovetail these really quick. Okay. Let's get the other one. It's two at eight or two at fifteen. It's going to do eighteen. There's one, two, there's one, two, 
This will take care of the two behind. And then this way the top is consistent all the way around. Okay. It is. It's like a fur edge is what they call it. Yeah. And then whatever we do, we're going to do opposites. Make sure this one hits. There you go. Thanks so far. Give it off the likes and loves. So here's this one for the one in the back. It's always so crazy because you're like, nobody's going to look back there. Except we know. Right, Charlie? She says, love that striped ribbon. Ooh. Um, I already pinned your private Oh, thanks, to you. Yeah, if you guys would love to join the private group, um, A, if you want to right now, you can get 20% off your yearly membership. We're not doing the 20% off on the, um, whatchamacallit, the monthly. Just the yearly. But you can take advantage of that, sign up today. Or you can do it on the Etsy shop which is Cat's Creations Race for Etsy. Okay, let's fan this out. Go over to your other side, which is, here's this one. We just have one, just one. There's our pipe cleaner. So we just have one on this side, which is nice. There's that. Grab our other one at 15. Oop, splice. Mm -hmm. Right there. Yep, nice splice job. And that's expensive ribbon too. Okay. So this one we can double. Take that one away. Let's put these back in. Fold. And then pinch. the same thing top and bottom I'll pull this one down which is kind of nice because it frames the sign hey couple embellishments super simple As soon as that pinch pouch went nowhere, found where it came on the outside of the container. There's that one. Um, super simple little gingerbread man. These came from, because I always get asked, where'd you get them? They actually came out of my stash when I bought a storage unit from a wreath maker that didn't, didn't want to do wreath making anymore. So we are going to cut these guys off. We're going to zigzags, perhaps? Yeah, but it's not really. Yeah. So we are uh, trying to. Sometimes 
sometimes you can pull the, the thread out. I said, oh my gosh, this one I thought I couldn't get any better. Uh -huh. Hang on a second. And his smile is missing. So for all that, well, let's try to use sharper scissors this time. There we go. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and place these. We're going to glue them right on the back, right into the center of our gingerbread pieces right here on the top. Just right in there. So they're going to snug in super cute there. And then underneath, do this one. Oh my word. These were so much easier to use a while ago. On the back. And if you're using a flat surfaced embellishment like this, you want to make sure that they're not going to sit on top of a metal slime. And let's do another boy. Keep finding all the girls. second. Make sure this is on. We're going to turn this around. Go ahead and add the little gingerbread. What do you guys think of the little gingerbread accents? It actually stopped. Thank you. Okay, now let me go here. Oh, trying to get them right in the little crook. Corner. Yeah. I love the little gingerbread people. I use these a lot on my... Thank you, Sharon. She said this, but it's again, Rita looks gorgeous. Uh, Rita asked where you got those. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, I think, like, I tried to find... I thought I was completely out of them last year. And then um, I think I went on, who was it? Craft Outlet or the race shop? Somebody had them. Or it could have, uh, no, I was going to say it's not Oriental Trading Company. I'm going to put a couple down here as well. Let's see, we've got a boy and a girl. I'm just putting them where we have, um, see, now that one came straight out. Go figure. Some come out and others don't. We're going to flip this over. And if you guys like the sign, the sign is from Pinky Jeb. She has her own Etsy shop, which is an adorable sign for this particular type of braid. Um, she also has the sign everybody's been looking for, um, the Happy Holidays house sign. See, now that one will come out. So if you're looking for that sign. Just found some on uh, Oriental Trading Company. Uh-huh. It uh, has gingerbread men like that, but not exactly like it. Okay. Amazon has it. The Amazon Walmart, has it. Walmart online shows they have it. Oh, nice. So Steve's so done some, business. he's done your homework. 
and um, found them on Amazon, Walmart. So or something Walmart. simpler. And let me just sh see. These guys are two and a half inches high by an inch and a half wide. So if you want the measurement on that, that's where we're at. Oh, and I forgot this one over here in the back. And they keep trying because sometimes you can pull their string all the way out. And this one. That's why I'm using my super sharp scissors, but it's just in the weirdest spot. Rita the gingerbread man? Yeah. You can get them at uh, Tricoral Training Company, Walmart.com, and Amazon.com. A couple different places. This one is going in here. So, yeah, I mean, I think that's where I found mine when I was looking for the replacement one because I was like, darn it. I actually had somebody who had wanted a wreath done with it. The little gingerbread people, and I was like, mm, I don't know where those go. I don't, I can't get them anymore. I don't know where they came from. But they're like little polymer clay gingerbread people. So if you want to know what they're made out of, they are a polymer clay. the little girl there we go and she is going to go up in here because I forgot we had one up in the top and I need Keep trying. It's always good to try. Sometimes you can get him out. Other times you have to get as close as you can. One side's always super easy. The other side, it's just the angle. One here. Little secret surprises underneath the ribbon. Mm -hmm. I can't wait because sometimes it's just a nice little treat for people to find the little gingerbread people hiding everywhere. Okay. Just like that. Okay. Gingerbread. Mm, maybe. Maybe one will go on the top. And the bow. Yeah, and the bow. Let me just prep one. So maybe I'll go up there. They come on like a little ribbon, so they're like on a garland if you're looking for them. They're attached to like a thin red thread. And then last embellishment, let me flip this around. I actually like him in there. I want to make sure that, that when the wreath hangs flat, um, because if you do them like this, which is looks great from here, but when you hang him up, he's actually facing the ground. Yep. So a couple last minute things, which is my favorite pick from Hobby Lobby, because there are little gingerbread candies, little peppermints everywhere. We're gonna add peppermints to the outside. Hi, Sharon. Ones. Thanks, Sharon. So we're just gonna twist these, and then these are going to go in right 
with our red. So we are going all the way around to make sure our cellophane stays tight. And then we're going to slide this right inside our little bow. So we have gingerbread and we have peppermints. So cut the ends down, twist it, glue all the way around. I'm basically melting the plastic all the way around and then we're adding those little touches so that we have gingerbread cookies we have peppermints we have ribbon we have everything let's put one of these on there same thing How much would I sell this for? Is it you asking me? Yeah. Um, I think this one I have listed for 97. Spinning it around. Good night, Rita. Thank you for joining us, Rita. We'll see you in Frederick tomorrow morning. I'm about to call you. <laughs> I get it. For the East Coast people, it's late. We're going to go right in here. Here's our little, little peppermints. Okay. We have one more. Just one more. Make sure we get that one. Pretty well twisted. Cut the end off. <laughs> Don't leave. Claire said, wow, it's 3.21 a.m. here in the UK. Really? Yep. Okay, nobody else has an excuse then, Claire, because you're definitely at the latest. Later right. Okay. Thank you for staying up watching. So, let me move these so we can glue the little gingerbread guy to the top. Let me make sure all these are fanned out. He needs to get glued Mm, mostly flat. He's going to actually sit on top of the red ribbon. So let's attach him. Be very generous with your hot glue. So that he sits perfect in there. Yeah. I won't be able to get pictures tonight. It's at 10 15 in New York. Wow. Okay. So yeah, 321. I've got to go five hours. <laughs> so, where's it at, Steve? There? Yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. So, our oh, gingerbread yeah. wreath is officially done. Um, this is the only one I am making for this year. And if you like it, you can pick it up on my website only at catscreationsandmore.com. And that's pretty much it. Thank you guys for sticking with me and um, doing the long late night craft. I appreciate you guys all being here. Um, and this one is done and in the record books for 2021. So just remember, Christmas calories don't count. Only after the first of the year. So I hope you guys have an amazing night. And I will talk to you next week Friday. And I'll plan something incredibly just as fun. And we'll touch base then. All right, everyone. Have a great night. Bye-bye.